Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And as a couple, we're just a couple of nerds ranking our favorite nerd movies. We start with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or the MCU. We've created a score sheet. We've gone ahead and ranked our movies based on this score sheet. And sometimes they surprise us. Yeah, and we've made the score sheet available to you down in the description below. You can either download it or you can fill it out online. Yeah, because if we disagree, you're going to be the, the ultimate decider. And yep. some of these movies, we do need your help. Exactly. Now on to our review for Ant-Man. Our first category is lead male, lead female likability. So our lead male in this one is Scott Lang, and our lead female is Hope Pym. For Hope, I gave her a three. She is definitely a badass. I gave her a score of four. She's super brave. She puts herself on the line. She's dying to, to go into the Ant-Man suit. She's ready to get her hands dirty and fight. Strong women unite. I'd love to have her in my friend circle. Who I want in my friend circle is Scott Lang. I gave him a four. I agree with you. I also gave Scott a score of four. He loves his daughter. He refers to his ex-wife as the first love of his life. Mm -hmm. um, and yet she's with someone else who's come into this position as the man of the house to his ex-wife and his daughter. And yet the most he can muster up is to call this guy an asshat. <laughs> There's something really redeeming in the fact that he doesn't deck the guy. Because I think a lot of people... I think he'd get charged with assault because the guy's a cop, so that's probably why he doesn't deck him. Yeah, but I mean, I think a lot of people would not be as, I guess, gracious and, mm. and generous of spirit as as Scott comes across to be. And if you so, want to be gracious, call someone an asshat. That plus he's adorable, he's funny. I mean, mm. what's not to love? Yeah, he's adorable, he's funny, but for hero bangability, I gave Scott Lang a zero. I gave him a score of five. It just felt wrong, any of the other choices, because I'm like, teach me a trick or two. I'm like, it's pump rum. Like, he's so sweet. Like, you just, I'm like, he's, the man is marriage material. Boom. He's not okay. like a dirty one night stand material. Thor is dirty one night stand material. <laughs> Scott Lang is marriage material. For her hope, I gave her a four. I gave her a score of zero. Lead male, lead female relatability. So separate from likability, this is basically where we talk about how much can we see ourselves in these characters? Yeah. In other words, are they truly our window into the story? So for Scott Lang, I gave him a score of two. For Scott Lang, I gave him a two as well. I think it reminds me of some of my friends. I was surprised because a lot of times we talk about that we are Ant-Man and the Wasp. If we were going to be Marvel characters in, in the MCU, we'd probably be Ant-Man and the Wasp. I'm not a convicted felon. Um, Details. Yeah. I, I don't have, uh, I have a daughter. I mean, I have fur babies, so I guess I could see myself in a father figure that way, but his love for his daughter is very critical and integral to his character and to who he is. So for Hope, I gave her a two. For me, I gave Hope a score of three. I said, I think it's the best parts of me. Um, I'd agree with that. Perhaps like best and worst. I think sometimes her defensiveness, she has a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, even like the daddy issues. I think I'm like, I can relate to to her on many levels, both the good and the bad. Moving on to the villain in Ant-Man. Now the villain in this was Darren Cross, also known as Yellow Jacket. His end goal is to make a lot of money and be the most powerful man in the world. How original, right? So he's weaponizing the pin particle and the Ant-Man suit now in mm -hmm. a new form as the Yellow Jacket to have that kind of most powerful weapon. How many people does Yellow Jacket's end goal affect? Well, for me, it's a three. It's a world's health and happiness. It's definitely the entire world is at risk if he's able to sell these yellow jackets. He's selling it to Hydra in yeah. the end. So, what and the hell, man? I also agree that Darren Cross has a score of three. It affects a world's health and happiness. Next category is how strong is the villain compared to the hero? So for me, I give this a score of three. I said he's stronger than the hero, mostly because of the fact that he just has a better suit. I mean, his suit can fly. It shoots lasers. He's just better equipped than Ant-Man. See, I gave him a two. I thought he was equal to Ant-Man because he's got a better suit, but he's not as used to the, to the suit as Ant-Man is. Do you care about the villain? I gave him a two. He's annoying enough that I wouldn't mind seeing him dead. I hate the guy. Oh, he makes me so mad. Being a rich douchebag, never my cup of tea, uh, to selling to Hydra. On top of this, he kills Antony. F you, Darren Cross. That's true. I love that ant. Um, and last but not least, he goes after Scott's kid. If you go after somebody's pets, you're dead. If you go after their kids, you are the worst kind of mother effer on the planet. Villain bang ability. So how do you think this one's gonna go for me? Uh, I don't think, you know, I don't, I don't think he's gonna do well. He, no. he got a zero for me. Yeah, and he got a zero for me. 
If I could have Shocking. taken away points, I would have. Next up is one of Bethany's favorite categories, side characters. And there actually weren't a ton of side characters in no. this movie, which kind of concerned me a little bit for how this was going to affect the score. The side characters that we do have are Hank Pym. We have Cassie. We have Paxton. We basically lumped uh, Luis, Kurt, and Dave all into one, because they kind of worked as a trio at that time, and since we've done that in the past for Lady Sif and the Warriors Three. 3, it just seemed appropriate. And Anthony and the Ants. I gave Paxton a score of two. I said that he makes our hero more likable, redeemable, and relatable. So for Paxton, I gave him a one. I said the plot has some holes without him. So I gave Hank Pym a two. Great job by Michael Douglas in this one. So I really liked Hank Pym, and I gave him a two. I also really liked Hank Pym, but I only gave him a one. Oof. Um, did Paxton a higher score than Hank I did. Pym? What? I did. To me, Hank Pym was there to educate us. His role was largely to tell us about the world, about the suit, about the abilities, who he was, who Darren was. I can't believe you gave Paxton a two and you gave Hank Pym a one. That's just craziness. That's that, that's insanity. I gave Anthony and the Ants a score of two. They get a two. You know what? If Ants can like you and be under your control, then you're a likable guy, Scott Lang. So good job. I think we're going to agree in this next category where Luis, Dave, and Kurt get a three. They are definitely there for the humor. Yeah, um, and Luis in particular. Oh, yeah. It's just, he's got just this way of delivering lines. But he asked Scott for waffles when he comes back from uh, Baskin Robbins. Do you want some waffles? It just made me laugh. Just delivering on asking somebody if they want waffles. Cassie was adorable. I feel bad giving her a two. I feel like she should have should gotten a higher score from me. Which is why I gave Cassie the MCS. Ah, you know what? I, okay. And you know what? It was his voice in my head <laughs> that told me to do that. Because I think it was our last film. If my, if my voice was really in your head, it, Charlie, it would not it would tell me to do other things. <laughs> oh, kids subscribe to us. <laughs> Better be careful. You had talked about how the reason that Rocket got the MCS for you in Guardians of the Galaxy was because mm -hmm. if somebody has the heart yes. and they make you laugh, they are the MCS. Cassie does exactly that. She does. She, she, does. she hits all the notches. She brings so much heart to this movie. Mm. We see Scott's heart on screen as a person because his daughter is everything to him. Um, and her love of him, that she reciprocates that, is huge. I mean, it tells us so much about who he is that she adores him to such a degree. So next up is the plot. Uh, and for this, I gave it a four. I said, oh, wow. it was the fact that it wasn't pretending to be anything it wasn't. And it was really putting your kind of every man by putting Paul Rudd mm -hmm. in the situation of like, how your average guy or girl could become a superhero. When you have something like that where you're like, wow, he's not, you know, a god of thunder or a super soldier, but he's kind of like me. You, you suddenly are like kind of glued to the screen. I mean, how is this guy gonna navigate this world? How is he gonna overcome the bad guys? For me, I gave it a two. I said it was enter entertaining but predictable. Winter Soldier set the bar high, Guardians of the Galaxy, and so I just didn't think it was on par with those movies. I didn't think there was enough unexpected twists or turns in order to give it a three. Female empowerment, what role do women play in this film? Female empowerment, I gave him a score of four. I said the female is the true hero. And I bet Bethany thinks that I'm gonna give it a lower score than I actually am. I gave it a four, Bethany. I think that Hope is a true hero in this one. She's the one that trains Scott Lang up, and she's the one that actually is better equipped to be in the suit. Hank Pym even says that they need her in order for this whole thing to work. If it weren't for the fact that she's not expendable to Hank Pym, mm. she is without question the best qualified to do this job. Yeah. Soundtrack. I gave Soundtrack a one. There were wonderful tunes in there. These songs kind of had me like... Yeah, you were dancing a little a bit. A little bit groovy. You were dancing. So even though I didn't know them, I was very into them. Yeah. Uh, and so for that reason, I gave it a score of three. On to humor. Now, once again, I've seen this movie so many times that the humor probably suffered a little bit in this one, but it still did very well. It got a 38 for humor out of me. Got a 49 for me. Next up are visual effects. I said this movie is a score of three. It's definitely big screen worthy. There's this whole ant-sized little world that they really explore, and obviously it's CGI, but they do a very, very good job convincing me that this is really happening. Yeah, and that's why I gave it a four. I think they did such a great job convincing us of this world. When they're, they're battling and they're throwing toy trains at each other, and it cuts back and forth between everything, 
Um, so I thought there were a lot, of, a lot of cool elements in this one where you knew it was CGI, but it looked very, very, very real and very believable. Moving on to Love Story. Bethany's already cheated and looked at my scoring sheet <laughs> before we did this. But uh, I gave Love Story a one. I thought it helps put a little bow in the whole thing. I gave Love Story a score of three. I said, I can't wait for these two to hook up. We're Ant-Man and the Wasp. We're, we're Scott Lang and, and Hope because to me, Hope is just out of Scott Lang's league. But I just never got the sense from her of why she likes him. Like mm -hmm. I know why I like him, but I don't know why she likes him. And that's why I gave it a one. He is like her dad. The same kind of courageous, genius guy mm -hmm. who's going to madly love her. Dialogue. Dialogue, I gave a three. It was sharp, it was clever, it was witty. I give Dialogue a score of four. I said I'm gonna be quoting this movie for years to come. Action sequences. This movie suffered a little bit in its score because there were only three action sequences in it. Now, while it didn't take away from the overall enjoyment of the film, it does hurt it a little bit in the scoring. I gave it a score of four. Um, I said I was sad when they when they ended, and this could be in part because there were so few of them that, mm. like, once we got into an action sequence and we could really see what Ant-Man was capable of and what he did, it was really fun. And I gave it a three. I said that I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way, and that gave it a total score of nine. Which brings us to Heart, the last category. I gave it a score of four. I said it warms the heart and waters the eyes, and this is due to, to two characters. Anthony and Cassie. I gave, I gave it a one. I said it had a sweet moment or two. So disappointed in you. <laughs> Moving on to our final scores. Uh, so my final score for Ant-Man was a 91. And mine was a 126. Uh, which gives it a total score of 108.5. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If we hit 200 subscribers, we will release our first bad reenactment video. This is where we take um, a scene from one of the Marvel movies and we will reenact it horribly. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be bad reenactment. You're going to love it. So go ahead and download our ranking sheet or fill it out online and post your score down in the comments below for Ant-Man. Our score was 108.5. But that's definitely not definitive.